I've been lying to you. I just moved to Australia and I've been posting all of these videos on YouTube about how much of an amazing experience it is and how much fun I'm having, but that's where the lies come in. It hasn't been the most beautiful and positive experience. Now I think it's time to come clean and tell you the real experience of what it's like to move to Australia. The good and the bad. Hey everyone, my name is Ellie and I've recently moved to Australia from California. I've been posting YouTube videos about my experience with moving and I realized that I hadn't done a sit down video where I really explained my experience. So that's why today we're gonna sit down and really explain all the ups and downs that I've been through and just the different struggles that I've faced. Jumping right into probably the biggest part of moving to a new country would be the loneliness. For my situation specifically, I was born in Australia. Isn't it? No, either. That's the one. So because of that, I was somewhat familiar with the area, but I think living here has brought me so much more of a different awareness of the country as a whole. Every time I'd be visiting, even though we were with family, everything was kind of planned out. We knew when we were gonna leave and come back, but actually living here, I feel like that's where you get the real experience of being in a different country. One part of loneliness as well is that by moving to a new country, you have to restart all the community that you have. Your favorite coffee shop that you like to go to, your favorite restaurant that you like to go to. Maybe you recognize your bus driver when you're like going around in your city. But when you move to a new country, all of that is new and all of that is different now. You have to start building this new community practically from scratch. At the beginning, it feels so incredibly lonely because you have no idea who your community is. That's been something that I've really struggled with because even though I'm a very outgoing person and I like talking to random people as much as I can, you're still starting at ground zero and you still have to build from that. You can't just go into a new place and expect to instantly have a community. It takes work and it takes effort. Effort. So not only do you feel lonely because you're in a new community that you're not familiar with, but also it can feel lonely because of FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. Especially with social media, I would see all my friends be going out on a Saturday night, having fun, taking photos, taking videos, and putting them on like their Instagram stories. Seeing all my friends celebrating without me definitely has been tough. You know, you really wanna be there and you wanna be a part of their lives, but also you made this decision to move to the other side of the world. And that is so tough to deal with, especially due to the time zone difference. Australia is like almost a day ahead of America. So if I'm very tired and sleeping on a Sunday morning and I'm watching some Instagram stories, I'll see all my friends going out for a Saturday night and they're all having fun and they're dressed up all cute and they look amazing. And it's like, ugh, I'm here on a Sunday. Work's about to start on Monday. All my friends are having fun without me. That's definitely something I've been struggling with just knowing that, you know, all these people are having fun without me. But at the end of the day, you have to realize like, you're the one who made this choice to move to another country. You have to accept parts of it, like having FOMO. I think one positive, if we can have like a positive takeaway about being lonely, is that it's actually taught me how to do so many more things alone. Before I would maybe go with my boyfriend to go watch a movie, or I would go with a friend to go to a concert or different things like that. Now I'm doing all of those things but alone because I don't have people around me that I can necessarily have as like my go-to. I have a lot of cousins here, so that has helped me a lot. But at the same time, it kind of gives me this comfort zone of staying in where it's like, okay, I only want to hang out with my cousins when I could be making a friend who's like outside of my family. It's definitely hard to get used to doing things alone, but I think I've become so much better at it and so much more confident in myself that even if someone doesn't want to come with me or I don't have anyone that I would know to come with me to an event, I know that I'm comfortable enough and confident enough to go to that event myself. Another thing I wanna discuss is communication. Communicating with people back home, I think is so much easier nowadays than it was say like 30, 40 years ago because we have things like FaceTime. We have things like social media, just other different ways to connect with people. And even though it's so much easier nowadays, doesn't mean that it's easy overall. It is still such a difficult thing to communicate with people, especially with the time zone difference, such as I think it's like 17 hours right now. But I feel like I have had to be so much more proactive with saying like, can I call you at this time on this time rather than just giving them a call because most of the time they would be asleep or I would be asleep. I think that's been something that is like so tough to really communicate that you don't think of when you're living nearby or even in the same country as certain people. Just knowing that you have to be constantly like checking their schedule and checking to see even if they're awake or maybe if they're like in class or at work or something like that. That's definitely something that I've been struggling with because sometimes I 
really want to call somebody at 10 p.m. but they're asleep. So communicating with people back home has been a real big difficulty. One thing that can be a positive and a negative at the same time would be eating the different food of the country that you're moving to. Since I'm moving to Australia, the food is pretty similar. It's not crazy different, but there are some differences. I would say like chain stores. In America, I would go to places like Chipotle and Chick-fil-A and In-N-Out Burger, things like that. Finding your go-to restaurants can be really fun, but at the same time, if you're a picky eater, it can be a little difficult and I think that's something that I struggled with because lately I have become a picky eater over the last couple of years and because of that finding my go-to's has been pretty difficult. I'm living in Melbourne right now and it has amazing food so that has been great because I've gotten to try different foods that I normally wouldn't have tried back home because I had my regulars that I would go to. In a way it's both a positive and negative that I'm trying these new places. I did miss a lot of the Australian foods that I had as a kid so like Tim Tams and meat pies and sausage rolls and now I can get that whenever I want but at the same time I'm really definitely missing all the food that I have from back home. The cool thing is though is that if I do want food like that I have the ability to make it at home so in a way it's also teaching me different ways to learn how to cook if I really want something that I can make it on my own. One thing I really struggled with coming over here was actually getting a job. I thought I had a job lined up when I was coming to Australia but it just didn't work out. At the beginning I really took the time to really adjust to being in a new country, you know, exploring different areas and just kind of treating it almost as a mini vacation before I moved here. Although it was really good that it gave me the time and space to really slow down and appreciate like being in a new country. At the same time, because I wasn't working, I was really using up my savings, which probably wasn't the best for me monetarily. Mentally, I feel like it helped me a lot, but in terms of, yeah, having an income, it wasn't very good for me because I wasn't making an income. I started to apply to some jobs, but I couldn't really even get an interview anywhere and I wasn't taking my job search super seriously, so I think that was what was kind of holding me back as well. I was still in the headspace of being on a mini vacation that I didn't take it super seriously that I need to get a job. And I had savings, but my savings were dwindling a lot faster than I expected. The first job that I got when I was in Australia was literally working at a fish and chip shop. It definitely was hard for me because I was coming from a work from home tech job to then going to like hospitality. I think it was hard for me to wrap my mind around because of the fact that I was more more at this like higher company with like a good job with like a consistent wage and then I was going to like hourly work and I felt like I was almost going backwards in my career. That was definitely something really difficult for me to like overcome and understand that like it's okay that you're like starting at ground zero until you can get another tech job or get another job that like works better for my situation. It felt a little sad for me knowing that I was like working in a job that I had in high school that I'm now doing with a college degree. Although it was pretty easy to get that hospitality job, at the same time they weren't giving me the shifts that I really needed. It was really good in the way because I got to focus on YouTube and create a lot of videos that I was really passionate about, but at the same time I just wasn't earning money. Obviously if you're moving to another country you need to be making money and I wasn't doing that. Since then I have moved to a new restaurant and they've been giving me a lot more hours so I think that's better for me because at least now I'm making money. Now jumping into transportation, back in California I owned my own car but moving to Australia I wanted to try and figure out the whole bus system and kind of go without having a car before I would need to go buy a car. Luckily I'm in Melbourne which has some pretty decent public transport so I have been taking the bus a lot. I think not having a car was also good though because it gave me a lot of independence and confidence in knowing that I could trust myself in order to get to a certain location and get back from that location. Location. Also, in terms of cost, I think using public transportation was better for me because I didn't have to pay for car insurance or petrol or anything like that. I was just paying like the flat bus rate. Overall, not having a car is a lot cheaper. Now to discuss expenses as a whole, that part has been pretty difficult for me in the way that at first I just wasn't really earning money. I was only going off of my savings. Just seeing my savings account constantly dwindle was not really a good feeling for me. I am really fortunate that I'm living with family right now, so I'm not paying rent and it, it was pretty much the reason that I was able to move here so quickly was because I was being supported by my family. I know that's not a situation that a lot of people are in but I just feel really lucky that I am in this situation that I could have help from my family. Also since I don't own a car the expenses in transportation are a lot cheaper than I had in California. When I was living in California I had a super consistent income but now working in hospitality it's a lot different and I need to be saving a lot more because eventually I do want to move out to my own place and I do want to buy a car. One thing that I've 
definitely been struggling with is making sure that I'm saving a lot of money and not buying anything unnecessary. I'm pretty good with the no shopping thing, but I think I spend a lot of my money on different food and different experiences. So cutting back on that has definitely been difficult. Luckily I'm in a new place, so I can kind of use my entertainment as going and exploring the new country rather than going and spending money doing like touristy things. So being in Australia, I definitely think about money a lot more than I did back in California, just because my income is very inconsistent. So I think that's definitely been something hard for me is just constantly thinking about money and constantly thinking about like the next step. In terms of self-improvement and reflection, I think moving to Australia has been a big growth for my confidence. There's definitely been days where I have felt so not confident and so bad about myself thinking, why did I even move here? What am I doing in this country? I think a huge part to actually feeling okay living in a new country has been journaling for me. I practically journal every morning and a lot of nights as well. I'm constantly reflecting and just kind of asking myself questions that I would then answer in my journal. One cool thing about moving to Australia though is that it did build up my confidence a lot, especially with YouTube. When I'm out vlogging in Australia, I feel kind of invincible and I feel like, you know, nobody cares what I'm saying and nobody cares that I'm like vlogging in public. I don't know, I feel so much more confident in Australia, like just putting myself out there, having conversations with random people. Like I was pretty confident back in California, but I just feel like it's developed almost like twofold by being in Australia. Because I had to constantly put myself out of my comfort zone, I just became comfortable out of my comfort zone. And I think that's been a huge development for myself. Okay, now let's talk about happiness. Have I been happy? happy living in Australia. And I would say I feel happy probably eight out of 10 days living in Australia. Obviously everyone has their ups and downs and you're not gonna be feeling 100% every single day. Australia is an amazing country and I constantly remind myself of why I moved here. The people are great, the food is great, the nature is great. The weather isn't the best all the time, but we're, we're working on that. I think it's just an amazing city with amazing people in it and I'm so grateful to be here. I am having a lot more fun in Australia just because everything is so new and there's just things that I've never seen before that I'm experiencing. Sometimes I really have a tough time with like the loneliness and missing people and stressing out about money, but in the end, I think it has been all worth it. So is there anything that I would change about my journey? Absolutely not. You know that meme of that guy who says like no regrets across his chest? That's me when it comes to moving to Australia. No regrets at all. I'm so happy that I moved here and I'm happy that I even had the opportunity to move over here. So for anyone that's watching and wants to move to a new country, this is your sign to do it. The thing is, even if you hate it and even if you wanna move back to your original country, you still come out winning because you learned something. There's no way that you can fail by moving to another country. You might have to go back because maybe you run out of money or certain things just didn't work out. But in the end, you wouldn't have failed because you would have learned so much about yourself and so much more about a different country and a new culture that you you never would have experienced before. Take the leap of faith and move to that country. If you're interested in moving to Australia, move to Australia. Australia is amazing. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> if you want to see more of my daily life, I do post a bunch of vlogs about a week in my life or a day in my life or even sometimes a weekend in my life. So definitely check out those videos if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching and much love.